Yeah, I'm going to tell you a story now about the lion and the mouse. Okay? Now, what happened? There was a, a lion called Balwant. He used to stay in a big forest, and he was the king of the forest. And uh, he was sleeping one day in the shade when some mice came to play there. Now, one of the mice, one one of the mice, who was called Mickey, he started running up and down the tiger, the lion. Huh? And uh, the lion got very annoyed that who is going up and down, who is going up and down. So he got very annoyed and he held Mickey in his paw and he said, I am going to eat you up. So Mickey said, no, no, please, 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 lion, don't eat me up, don't, don't eat me up, just throw me somehow. So the lion said, okay, I will forgive you this time, but no, don't do this again. He said, no, I won't do it again. So uh, he, Mickey said that since you have been so nice to me, if you ever need my help, tell me. So the lion said, you are such a small thing. What can you help me? So Mickey said, okay, but still, if you sometimes need my help, just ask me. Then what happened one day, the lion got caught in a net. And the net was very strong. He was not being able to get out. So he started roaring and crying, but get me out of the net, get me out of the net. And Mickey heard his shouts and he came. And he said, uh, I will eat the net and we'll be able to get out. So he ate the net and he freed the, uh, the lion and the lion was very grateful to him and he said, you really have been a friend because you are a friend indeed. So the moral of the story is that the tiniest friend can be of mightiest help. Did you enjoy the story you just heard? Did it engross you? Was it told in an interesting manner? Did the moral express different emotions? Did her voice and face convey fear, surprise, anger, or joy? What about the children's reactions to the story? Were they absorbed in it? Did it capture their imagination? As you have seen, the children gradually lost interest. They were restless and distracted. The narrator made no efforts to get their participation in the story. In fact, she herself appeared quite bold. Had she been more expressive, or had she enacted the different scenes of the story, then undoubtedly the children, as well as you, would have enjoyed the story more. In Block 6, Unit 25, you know that even though a story may be interesting, if it is not told in an engaging manner, it loses much of its charm. The storyteller has a crucial role to play. This is clearly evident in the next story. This is a story about Motila a proud man of the market. While telling the story, the narrator has used a picture storybook. This was done in the first case as well. But contrast the way in which each of the narrators has used the storybook. Let's listen to the story now. The story I am going to tell you today is called Moti Lai, the proud man of the market. Do you know what proud means? A man who thinks that he is very and he is shouting. Proud means, in this story, proud means is a person, this proud man is a person who thinks he is better than anybody else. And why does he think that? And he was thinking. I am the bettest man of, of, the, of all the people. Yes, that's exactly what he thought of himself. He had many buffaloes, he had many cows, he had lots of carts, he also had a carriage which was drawn by four horses and he lived in the biggest house in the whole village. And his wife was also the prettiest in the whole village. And he was very proud of all of it. And every time he used to think, oh my, there is nobody like me in the whole of the market. So one day he decided to go for a walk. Hmm? So he started walking. 
feeds when he looked down at the hall, he was walking like this. And he was thinking, aha, everybody is watching me. Now they'll all know what a very important person looks like. Can you see him walking down? Can anybody walk like him? Can you walk like him? Yes. With his fat stomach stuck out and his nose up in the air? And uh -huh. Okay, let me do it first. That's very good, Priyanka. Just then, Dhrubi Shami Lal, the washerman, came along. And he said, Ah, oh, hi, good morning, Mr. Lal. How are you? What a fine day it is today. So, Mr. Lal looked at him and said, Ah, oh, you silly man, how dare you speak to me? You am the washer man and I am the richest man in this village and you dare speak to me? Don't ever do that again. And he walked out. Shani Lal was so shocked. He said, my God, what a good man. He may have a lot of money, but he certainly doesn't have any good manners. So he said, my God, I'm never going to speak to him again. Just then he continued walking. And just then, one little boy came running along. And he, what did he do? He tried to put very cute, naughty boy. <laughs> so the little boy got suddenly scared first. Don't you know who I am? He said, Yes, sir, I know who you are. You are? Proud man of Timarpur. What did he say? You are the proud man of Timarpur. And off he ran. So he said, hm. Look at these children today. They just don't know how to behave. Hm. He tried to touch my beautiful shirt. God, now I have to get it washed. So he grumpy, he grumpy, he kept walking along. Hmm? Suddenly, and of course now he was so angry that his nose went one inch more up into there. So he was walking. And my God, suddenly there was a ouch! Where is Mr. Motilal? Can you see him? Yes. Where is he? In the bathroom. In the bathroom. Oh my God, what's this? Oh God, he tried to get up, but he couldn't get up. No. Help me, somebody get up, stop staring at me and laughing at me. No, stop, help me. <laughs> but did anyone come to help him? No. So, there he is. Struggling <laughs> in the garden, trying to get up. <laughs> and when you see nobody is coming forward to help him. All they are going to their own house. Yes, they are all continuing to go along their merry way. And they you know that because the people don't talk to him. Yes, why won't they talk to him? They got oxygen in their room. That's wrong. So he tried, the more he struggled, oh God, and his hair was covered with mud, and his face was filthy, and his clothes were dirty, and he had mud on his eyes, he had mud in his mouth, and he was fighting. He was a terrible mess. So he tried to get up, oh God, these horrible people in this village, they can't even come and help me. Oh God. Oh. Now again he tried to get up. Now actually he was feeling a bit embarrassed also because he had fallen down in front of everyone. So he said, 
I show these silly people who are laughing at me. So he got up again and he again he put up his nose in there and started walking. But now his eyes were full of mud. So can he see where he is going? No. So he has to be very careful. He has to look down and see where he is going. I look down. So, but he wasn't. Again he started walking and again he tumbled somewhere. Again he had to struggle to get away from it. And the whole village was standing and watching. And he said, Ah, now Mr. Murthy Lal is not looking very proud now. By then he was feeling very sorry for himself. And then all the people were laughing and talking about what happened to Mr. Murthy Lal that day. During the opportunity after the story is over, nurtures their imagination and creativity. Those are some of the points that this group of children made after listening to the story. Their points reflect the scenes and the characters of the story. You saw how the narrator acted different sequences from the story and encouraged the children to act alongside. This increased the children's enjoyment of the story. No doubt they were so involved in it. A story can also be a means of introducing new concepts to children. Did you notice how the storyteller introduced the concept cloud to children and explained its meaning? The use of aids like picture books, flashcards and masks makes the characters of the story real for children. They make the scenes come alive. In the story that we are here, the storyteller has used finger puppets. This is the story about Hira, a baby elephant, and his family who are in a circus. Look at the puppets carefully. These have been made by the teacher in the preschool. Can you see this picture of this is? Elephant. And it's in a circus. And in its name, it's called Hira. This elephant is called and he is a baby elephant. Here. This is Hira. This is its mommy elephant. Papa elephant. And Baba elephant. You don't have to be Papa elephant. Mama elephant. Mommy elephant. Papa elephant. So it's a family of elephants. Where was the new elephant? In the surprise. Yeah. In my jungle. And in the jungle. And in the jungle. And in the forest. Yes, in the forest. Now what happened? You've seen it in the forest? Yeah. All right. Now these elephants, they belong to a circus. Now what happened one day? They said, let's go on a picnic. You went to a picnic? Yes. Yes? Yes. You all go for a picnic? Yes. And you like it very much? Yes. You go to circus? Good. Now what happened? They played, they played with the ball. They threw it on one another. They fell wet on the trunks. And shh, threw it on the other. Now the baby elephant was so tired after playing so much, he went off to sleep. And the other elephants just went away slowly, they looked here, they looked there and went away. Now the baby elephant woke up. Mommy, Papa, where are you? He couldn't find his mother. Or its father. Now, uh, what did that? It went in, walking slowly, looking for his mother and father. And on the way, he found a river. And when he went to the river, he went to the river and filled its trunk with water. This is the elephant's trunk. Now, when it filled it with water, it spread some water onto the tree. Shh. He liked the sound. When I was doing that, a tiger came along. Now the tiger said, Baby elephant, I am going to eat you up. Now the baby elephant was frightened. 
No, he is very brave. Hmm? Thanks, little water in its trunk. It will try to run away. Please save me, save me. And it ran away. Ah, the elephant liked it very much. What it did? It filled water in its trunk. It spread all over. So when it was doing like that, a wolf came running. Running, running, running. Ah, yeah, yeah, baby elephant. I'm going to eat you up. Once again, what did the baby elephant do? It spread the water and the wolf ran away. Now once the wolf ran away, baby elephant was very tired. Mommy, mommy, where are you? Papa, where are you? So the mama elephant and the papa elephant, they came running. Hero, hero, hero. And the baby elephant ran to its parent and all of them together, they went back to the circus. The clowns in the circus, isn't it? And they all went back to the circus. circus. Did you see how the finger puppets attracted the children? Puppets are perhaps the most exciting of all aids, and finger puppets is just one of the types of puppets that you can use. You would have also noticed that while listening to the story, children expressed their opinions and asked some questions. The storyteller heard them patiently and gave relevant answers. She did not scold them or tell them to sit quietly. Here the focus is the children, and so they have complete freedom to say what they want to. On this flexible approach of the storyteller depends whether or not the children will be absorbed in the story. After listening to the story, the children played with the puppets, dramatized some sequences, and created their own stories as well. See how they are enjoying themselves. हीरा माता हीरा की मामा के तरह हीरा से ताना अपनी मामा के साथ एक दिन घूम रहा था तो एक बड़ा बड़ा उनके 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 पास एक बड़ा सा हाथी आया हाँ नहीं हीरा तो छोटे वाले में आएगा ना This is true of all the three stories you have heard till now. The first story speaks about friendship, the second about humility, and the third about Hira the Elephant says how through presence of mind and courage one can surmount the difficulties. But contrast the ways in which the message has been conveyed in each of the three cases. In the first case, the narrator has stated it explicitly and directly. She is moralizing. You know that stories that preach tend to be boring, and in any case, preaching is not the way of imparting values. If one draws out and explains the moral of a story to a child, then it loses much of its purpose. In the other two cases, the message is hidden. It is conveyed indirectly. The narrators do not moralize, and hence it is more effective psychologically. The purpose of a story is enjoyment, 
and this along with that, it also helps the child to understand something about herself, then that is an additional gain. A story may mean different things to different children based upon their life experiences. And so it is best left to children to draw out what they feel from it. Have you ever taken children out to see a puppet show? If you work in a preschool center, you've probably organized one at your center. Puppet shows fascinate children, for here the storyteller is behind a screen and so not visible to them. To them it seems that the scenes being depicted and the emotions being aroused are being directly experienced by the puppets. The puppet show we will now see is about a clever frog who fooled the baby lion and so saved himself. How closely the children identify with the puppets is evident as you see their faces mirroring the different emotions. Also note how the narrators have maintained children's interest in the puppet show by asking them to sing songs and by asking them questions. Some of the children in this group are a little older than six years. Oh, I'm a lion, baby lion here. Oh, what a lovely day. Oh, I want to go for hunting. I want to eat something. So, I will go for hunting. But my mama says, you are a baby. Am I a baby? Yes. Yes. But I can go for hunting. have gone so farther away. Now I am lost. I don't know what to do. Mama, where are you? I'm lost. Mama, please help me. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. What to eat. Aha! Uh -huh. I can see a frog too. So what? If it is a tiny one, I will eat him up. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Hey, you, little creature, what are you doing here? I, I am a frog and I am the king of this place. Who are you? You are the king. Don't tell me that. And don't you see, I am so big. I am the king. I am the son of the king of this place. So you go away. You are not the king. <laughs> you are the king. Son of the king of the jungle. So you better go to the jungle. This is my kingdom. Don't come here. I am the king of this place. Ha! Huh. If you don't believe that I am the king of this place, come on. We'll have the contest. Contest? What sort of a contest? Oh, we'll have a jumping contest. Alright. I agree. Whosoever jumps for the most wins. Alright. Ready? Yes. Okay, okay. You count up to three and then we will jump. Alright. One, two, and three. Where are we, little creature? I can't see you anywhere. Where are you? <laughs> I won! I won! I won! I won! I won! 
you lost. Now you lost. You know, I am the king of this place. No, no, I don't believe that. I can't believe it. Oh, wait a minute. Just let me see. I can see something hanging in your mouth. What's oh. that? Oh, you are talking about this. Yes. This is the leftover of last night's dinner, you know. Last night's dinner? What did you have? Oh, I had a very big lion for dinner. Yummy, it was very nice. Lion? Did you eat a lion yesterday? Yes, yes. You know, I like lion for dinner. Lion? And I'm so lucky. Today I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat you for dinner today. Eat me? Yes, wait, wait, where are you going? Wait. Oh no, oh God, save me. Oh mama, where are you? Please save me, oh God. Oh, at last I'm saved. <laughs> run away, run away. I feel him, I feel him. I'm so clever. Children, you know? I want the I want this news. Yeah. Yes. 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 After the cup of clay, the children wrote the story and drew characters and scenes of the story. Writing out the story is a good way of furthering language. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to show you some. What are you doing? I'm going to clap. What? Clap. This is a frog. One day the baby lion came and then the frog came. Then the frog singing. There was a big baby lion. One day the baby lion said, Oh, I am so big lion. But my mama said, go, Don't go far. But I will go a little farther. In this program, you have heard four people narrating stories. What did you like about each person's way of telling the story? Do you think the narration could have been improved? How will you have told these stories? Discuss these aspects with other learners at the study center. On the basis of the stories that we've heard, we can draw out some general principles. These are, narrate the story in an interesting manner. Modulate the voice to convey a different emotion. By enacting certain sequences and by using facial expressions, make the story come alive. By listening to a story, children enjoy singing some song related to it. After narrating the story, give children opportunities to express their feelings and thoughts, encourage them to play with the puppets, to draw and to paint, to enact the story, and to create their own stories. If possible, use aids during storytelling. In this program, we have seen some aids that can be used during narration. In another program, we will talk about how to make these aids from low-cost material easily available at home.